Hey guys, welcome back to another Realm of the Man Guide video, and today I want to help you get prepared for Orcs 3, starting with which classes are best to bring. So needless to say, if you don't have at least a 6-8 character with reasonable equips like Wine Cellar Tops, then this dungeon should not even be a consideration. The Oryx Sanctuary makes the Lost Halls look like a pirate cave. Trust me, this is not a dungeon you can just stroll into and magically get to the end. You actually need to know what you're doing. So as you guys know, probably by now, that we've been in a very melee-centric meta for a while. Just about every late-game dungeon like the Shatters, Lost Halls, and even Fungal Cavern have prioritized warriors, knights, and paladins for their ability to just face tank anything and everything while dealing indescribable amounts of damage. Combine that with us being able to steamroll through everything, it only makes sense that the best way to get things done is just to have as much damage as possible and forget about everything else. Not anymore. For the first time in years, we have a complete shift in the metagame on what classes are meant to be the best. I'm going to be going over each individual class descending from worst to best and give a brief explanation on why I gave them their rating for Oryx Sanctuary in particular. So this is sort of a tier list, but in a more interesting video format. Hope you enjoy it. Starting off with D tier, and I gotta say, the worst of the worst has to go to the Rogue class. We're kind of getting to the point where Rogues have become completely overshadowed by the Trickster in almost every way possible. Obviously you can't rush the Sanctuary which ruins its effectiveness in general, not to mention rogues have some of the worst offensive and defensive capabilities without aid of their stealth. Of course, these bosses don't really care if you're invisible or not. There's never really a reason you should bring a rogue into Oryx 3 no matter which boss you're fighting. While Necromancer has always been a really solid class to play, especially for new players since it's beginner friendly and self-sustainable, for all intents and purposes, it's basically a downgrade from any other staff class when it comes to pure offense, since you lose some of that DPS in exchange for the ability to regenerate a little bit, crowd control runs rampant among the four ministers and the big boss himself, and while the Necro does have the Skull of Endless Torment, which has a quasi puri effect, the only boss that you can hit enough enemies for the cleansing effect is Chief Besa, who has the least amount of debuffs. For all the other bosses, he's an objectively worse priest in utility, and a worse wizard or mystic in DPS. I was compelled to give Necro a C tier rating just by virtue of their class's range, it's just that they're a little too underpowered where it is right now and not quite an efficient choice for bossing. I'm sorry to do this to you if you're watching Woods, but uh, the ninja is a terrible class to bring into the sanctuary. High DPS, make no mistake, and the speedy buffs are a blessing especially when trying to kite back oryx or rotate quickly, but ninjas have too short of an attack range, even worse than rogues while also being just as squishy, and while they have amazing mobility, you literally have no reason to bring a ninja compared to another melee who can bring more to the table than just more damage while also being tankier. I've always regarded the sorcerer as a respectable mid-tier class, because it has a few things going for it. Of course, it still faces the issue of being a class more suited towards wave clear and regular dungeons not so much endgame bossing. Having said that, they still have some tools up their sleeve to make note of, such as the benefit of being able to utilize the wand's impressive 9 range while also dealing strong burst damage if you have the right equipment, such as the Scepter of Devastation. It's not an entirely useless choice, but there are better options out there. The Knight. Oh, have you fallen from grace? It was the most powerful class in the game bar none, but over time with the release of more powerful enemies being immune to stun, and in many cases armor break too, along with a lot more attacks dealing true damage, the signature strength of this class has lost its luster. The Knight is still a class that you can bring with you if you're concerned for your safety and enjoy their splendid defense, but that might even work against you considering the sheer danger of approaching just about any of these enemies in a close quarters fight. I agree that the Knight still has the highest rate of survival out of every class, except maybe a Puri Priest, but there's not much else you're useful for other than that. The Samurai has the same kind of issue as the Knight, where it's not bad, it's just not very good either. You have a decent amount of damage, albeit short range, and while the Wakizashi can aid you with getting some chip damage in, both your weapon and ability have such limited range that it's way too risky to use this class, since I believe Oryx 3 is immune to expose. Although, you can still expose the other ministers, which is why Samurai places modestly in C tier. On the bright side, you can take comfort in the fact that when you're able to deal damage, you'll probably be one of the better contributors in DPS among the raid group, but you just have to be very careful with your spacing. Now the warrior for a while trumped knight as the strongest class in the game in almost every aspect. High defense, fast movement speed, and dishes out ridiculous damage. The only weakness the class really had was that it was a melee and the short range was technically supposed to be a con. But since the majority of realm has been made trivial and easy thanks to the steamroll meta, that didn't matter. But I'm sure you could have guessed by now, being a melee class automatically places you at a heavy disadvantage in the sanctuary. In order for warriors to perform well, they basically have to step in front of death's door and pray they don't get sucked in because going in melee range against most bosses in the sanctuary is tantamount to a death sentence. 
I rate the warrior a B tier by their virtues alone in that they still deal monstrous damage and offer the sweet utility of Berserk to the entire party. Not to mention, they are good at avoiding fire with their speedy buff, but this dungeon is not friendly to melees in the slightest. Before I continue on forward, I know that melees are still technically very valuable in Oryx Sanctuary, including just all three of them, but most of the time, your DPS uptime is going to take a huge hit since there are just so many instances where ranged classes can consistently do damage while melees only have very selective parts of a boss fight where they can safely go in. The community in general has had a split opinion on the Mystic. Some argue it is the best class in the game while others say it's terrible. I think if we weigh the pros and cons of Mystic in terms of their application to Oryx 3, it's about a B tier. To almost every extent, Stasis doesn't matter all too much against all of the bosses except maybe Besa, but they still boast some impressive DPS given the right items, plus they have the benefit of range with staffs, and some of the new orbs like the Scorching Stone and Orb of Conquest have done wonders to give them different ways to apply their DPS. The latter of which can actually allow you to contribute to a fight without having to get in attack range, since even ranged classes have to put themselves in harm's way to shoot their shots, which just goes to show you how much harder it is for melees. The Trickster's decoys shine once again since they suck at pretty much everything else. Just like how they're useful in diverting aggro for some devastating attacks in the late game dungeons, they're also important against practically every boss in the sanctuary. In fact, their presence alone can shave off minutes of time it takes to kill a boss or even make fights much safer for the whole party with a well-timed decoy. That being said, they are still quite weak in the offense and defense department, so I don't believe they deserve a rating any higher than B tier. Essential for every run, but you don't really need any more than one or two at most. After so many years, the Assassin has finally found a purpose. Before, it was laughed at for being one of the most pointless classes in the game, and while the Crystal Fang Venom and Parasitic Concoction gave it some much needed utility, they still weren't good enough to be really all that practical. But that has changed with the advent of this dungeon. There are often a lot of phases in many of these boss fights where getting close enough to use your weapon is too threatening. But the Assassin doesn't shine because of its weapon. Since you effectively have infinite range on your poisons, you can just chuck them over and over again to deal your damage that way. All of the bosses except for Chief Besa have parts of their battles where they stand relatively stationary, allowing for Assassins to use their more powerful DPS poisons like the Murky Toxin and Bottled Metasozoan. Not only that, but their high speed does allow them to safely maneuver around and avoid enemy fire. They're not that good enough to really place any higher than B tier, but it sure as hell is an improvement compared to their previous contributions, or lack thereof, I guess. Now, while Melee's lost their title as the best classes for endgame dungeons, the Paladin has been punished the least. They're well known for their impressive damage output, that part is indisputable, but their utility is almost second to none. The tiered seals boosting max HP and regeneration can definitely alleviate a lot of pressure for survival, especially since you're inflicted with pet stasis almost all the time. But this dungeon proves once again just how vital the marble seal is. The sheer amount of damage you just cannot avoid in these fights can wipe out even a fully maxed character in just a few shots, and with so many flying around, there's no way you can last that long. But because of how effective the marble seal is at boosting your party's resilience, it allows for the paladin to still be a necessary class, exceeding that of warriors even. The Huntress has always been a respectable class, with a solid damage output and decent range, along with the various utilities she can access through her traps, and the bow classes being given arguably the best UTs and STs in the game. You may not have as much range as the staff or wand classes, but what you lack in reach you make up for with your higher damage and more importantly your ability. DPS traps such as the Vile Spirit and Cave Dweller Trap are awesome for supplementing your DPS, especially when it's unsafe for you to use your bow. Along with that, the Life Bringing Lotus can have the class double as emergency first aid and backup support for the party should the need arise. A very respectable class, no real weaknesses in this dungeon except for maybe their average speed. What I said for the Huntress also applies to the Archer, but what the Archer lacks in utility it makes up for with much higher damage. Unfortunately, Daze doesn't work on any of the bosses, so the Quiver of Thunder won't make a difference here, but if you have the Void Quiver or the Mad Javelin, you'll find yourself contributing potentially more damage to a fight than even melee classes, since they all have very impressive range. I personally think the Huntress is the better of the two classes since she can wear a bunch of different hats, but you can never go wrong with the Archer either. High damage, respectable range, and can deliver exactly on what they're designed to do in these dungeons. Now this might come off as a surprise for you guys, but the first S tier class in this video is the Bard. When this class first came out, people looked at it and went, yeah, okay, it's not bad, but didn't really think much of it since the range boost from their loots was never really important. But man, did they go from average to essential through this dungeon. Bards get the same perks of range and damage from just being a bow class, and their slightly higher speed does make dodging less of a daunting task compared to their counterparts, but the bonus range their loots provides paints such a stark contrast in difficulty for a lot of these bosses. 
I mentioned before that even staff and wand users can struggle to stay safe despite their high attack range, but with the extra 25% bonus reach, this does wonders, especially against Oryx 3 and Lucorix where it's so hard to get close to them without being blasted right in the face. Not only that, but the Snake Charmer and Wavecrest Constantina are both fantastic in the dungeon, with the former allowing you to outrun any form of danger and the latter basically giving you an assassin poison to use if you ever feel like staying far away during more difficult phases. Before, people didn't care too much about bards since they didn't need the extra range to handle the Crystal Entity, Void Entity, or Shatter's bosses, but in Oryx's Sanctuary, I sometimes wish I had the bard buff on permanently. S tier class without question. The Priest has had a rocky history. It started out as one of the most valuable classes in the game back when pets didn't exist, but then the steamroll meta came along for the past 4 years, and most players were able to get by with a rare or legendary pet and paladins. Those are no longer enough for Oryx 3. At least 10% of the raid party needs to be priests. The sheer amount of reliance that you'll be placing on the class's Puri and healing would be the same as a starving pack of wolves. The priest is back on top as the most important utility class in the game alongside the bard. If there are less than 5 priests in a party of 65 players or so entering Oryx 3, I guarantee you less than 10 will survive all the way to the end. Debuffs like crazy, so much damage flying at you in every direction, half of which you can't even dodge, it's not uncommon for Oryx 3 alone to take upwards of 30 minutes to complete just because everyone is doing all they can to merely survive. In fact, he's so hard that even DPS classes offer more defensive equipment like Solus Robe, Breastplate of New Life, and even swapping out the crown for a Decca just because there's so much damage. When in doubt, bring a Priest. If you can get a Puri, that's even better. The Wizard by far is the most effective offensive class to take into Oryx 3, high damage and very consistent DPS thanks to their spell bombs, not to mention they have practically infinite casting range. I think it's pretty obvious why I placed Wizard as an S tier class for Oryx's Sanctuary. It's been a staple ever since the game came out and it will always be a staple. In spite of other classes receiving much more usage thanks to their more versatile equipment and abilities, nothing can really compare to the wizard's extreme damage and reliability in just about any situation where you need to shoot things, and that's what Realm the Mad God is all about. The only weakness I say this class has is that they're not very fast movement-wise and so you have to be very aware of your surroundings since you can't run that quickly nor can you afford to take much damage. Ultimately in the end, you're welcome to bring whatever class you want, but just know that this dungeon will tax everything you know about Realm of the Mad God. How well you know your character's limits, how fast your reactions are, how keen your spatial awareness is, how sharp your instincts are. No matter what class you bring into Oryx Sanctuary, a weapon is only as strong as the wielder. There is no easy solution to this dungeon, you have to be ready for it. I'm not exaggerating when I say that Oryx's Sanctuary is a severe difficulty spike compared to the Lost Halls and Crystal Cavern. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. But the only way to beat this dungeon is just to go for it. No amount of studying, watching videos, or equipment makes you more prepared for this dungeon than first-hand experience. Be prepared to die when you go in. And don't feel bad if it takes a while for you to get the hang of it. I consider myself a veteran at the game, and I've failed 11 times before getting my first win. Believe me, the rewards are worth the trouble. These are some of the best white bags I've ever seen. If you guys enjoyed, a rating would be much appreciated, and be sure to share this with your friends who are also wondering what classes to bring into this formidable dungeon. If you do have any questions, do not hesitate to let me know. I can't imagine how long it's going to take for plays to overcome Oryx 3. Decca really exceeded expectations on what the final boss of Realm is supposed to be, and I'm quite pleased with that. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon in the next video. Take care.